All right, so I'm going to be talking a bit about um, Rack and middleware and how to build uh, a web framework. Now, obviously, there's no way I can get everything in in a half hour. So effectively, what I'm going to be trying to do is I'm going to be trying to get a 45-minute talk in in a half hour. Um, so let's just go ahead and uh, breeze through this. Um, my name is Charles Maxwood. Um, and this GitHub link is uh, where you can go and get the code that I'm going to show off. Um, about me, um, again, you can get the source code. Uh, I run teachmetocode.com. We, uh, uh, we being primarily I, uh, put together um, screencasts, tutorial screencasts, and, um, and we have a podcast. We have articles about Agile and Ruby, Ruby on Rails. And uh, so go ahead and check out any of these links. You can, follow, you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook. You can follow Teach Me to Code as well if you're just interested in site updates and things like that. Um, so let, let's go into what Rack is. Uh, basically, Rack is a library that helps you handle HTTP. And so what it does is uh, you basically provide it with some object that re re uh, responds to the call method. And what it passes is a hash that uh, describes the things that came in on the request. Um, and then what it does is it returns an array. And uh, there are three objects in the array. And we're going to see all this in a minute. I just want to get it out of the way so you can kind of understand where things are going. Um, but the array um, has the status as the first element. It has the headers in a hash as the second element. And then um, the body or multiple bodies in the response. And the body has to be some object that responds to dot each, like an array. Um, and each element should uh, be a string, or should yield to as a string. Um, and it provides a middleware framework that allows you to set up your, <coughs> your uh, functionality. So here's a basic object. And uh, what it does is it's just, uh, it, it does basic, uh, in fact, I have a little, uh, a little laser pointer that I'll just use here. So, so basically, we have a lambda, and a lambda will respond to dot call. And so we just set up a lambda. It takes one argument, env, and that's just kind of the environment that, that HTTP has created. And then what we do is we take the environment, and Rack gives us this convenient object. It's called a Rack request that uh, you can pull the environment in, and it'll actually create an object that's a little more pleasant to deal with, as opposed to guessing what the keys might be or going to try and look up the documentation. So then you have, uh, you can pull the parameters out, and it's just like using Rails params at this point, um, except that they're, they're stringified keys instead of symbolized keys. And then you have the dividend, um, and you put it to a float, and the divisor, and you put that to a float. And I fixed this in the code that we're going to run, but I didn't fix it in my slide. The dividend should be on the other side of the div division. Um, and then we return the content, and we have um, a 200 status, which is um, success. This is our header, and it'll complain at you if you don't put the content type in. And then um, we return the quotient in an array, and then this run tells um, Rack what to do. And so then all you have to do is you just call rack up and then config.ru. RU stands for rack up, and it'll just know what to do. Um, so I'm going to switch really quickly. And we have our application here, our rack application. And I don't see my mouse. Oh, there it is. So you can see that I've already run it. 10 divided by 4 is 2.5. Um, and this is actually up and running right now. So if we change it to 5, then it should change 2.0. Um, and all that's running, like I showed before, is uh, this uh, rack up. And I'll show you kind of what I'm running over here. Um, this code is actually here. This code is actually running. I've, I've put the branch that it's running out of. This is the basic rack branch. And uh, so if you check it out, you go into the directory and you run uh, rack up space config.ru space dash p 3000. The dash p just specifies the port, and it'll start right up for you. 
Um, so then we get to middleware. And middleware is just a, a, a several layers of filters that go um, between the request and the actual execution of that application, which is the Lambda that we saw before. So you can set up filters before it gets to your application. You can set up uh, filters out uh, after. So you know it gets to your application and bubbles back out. Um, you can do both in the same piece of middleware, and the middleware can actually be an endpoint. So let's go ahead and see an inbound filter. And again, there's the branch name right here in the bottom right. Um, so this is in the inbound filter branch. Um, so basically, this is our, our piece of middleware. Now, there are a few things I need to point out. First off, there's the initialize method that takes one argument. Um, you can set it up to take more arguments, but you have to be very specific about where you're calling that middleware from. Um, so it'll set up initialize. Uh, it passes in the app. And this is just basically a reference to where you are in the middleware stack. And you need to be able to reference it from call, so you assign it to an instance variable. And then here we're doing the same thing. We're getting the parameters. And then what we're doing here is we're setting it up so that we can um, get pass in hex values, and it'll convert them to decimal and then give us the answer. So dividend and divisor, we just take them. And since we called, this, is, this was something that, that fouled me up a little bit, and I'll just point it out. Um, if you haven't called rack request.new on your environment, then this end rack request query hash is empty. But if you, if you have called it, then this is set, and all subsequent pieces of middleware will reference this for your params and not the query string. So since my stack is really short, and I, I know that, and, and I've called this, I just know that this is what it has been set, and that's what I need to reference. Um, and there's an example later where I manipulate the query string instead because I know that I haven't called this. So anyway, so what we do is we, uh, we just do a regex match for 0x and then a, hash, or a hex number. And if that's the case, if you call eval on the string, it'll convert it to decimal for you. It'll convert it to a fixed num. So then we can just put it back into this hash. And then the next thing down the, the chain will pick it up and uh, convert it to decimal. So. Um, let's go ahead and see that one real quick, if I can find my mouse. So here what I've done is you see divisor is 10.0, and the, the dividend is 0xA, A is 10. So 10 divided by 10 is 1. Um, if we add more onto it, then whatever this is, uh, 160, 171 divided by, that's not right. I think this is doing, I think this has them swapped. So I think it's 10 divided by 171. I'll have to double check that. But it is, it, you know, it is doing the math and returning a float. So. Um, let's come back over here to an outbound filter. And what this is doing is it takes the result that we've gotten and it, uh, it basically rounds it to two, point, to two places. So it takes the float and it changes it from 3.0 to 3.00 or 1.33 if you do 4 divided by 3. And all, all it's doing here, this is the whole thing. It's just, it picks up the body and it passes the body as a float to sprintf, and then you get the rounded body. Rounded body is a string, so it just passes it back. That's all you have to do. You can manipulate any of these. You can manipulate, manipulate the status or the header or any of this on the way back out. So if we come back over here, you can see that uh, 4 divided by 10 is 0.4. Um, 4 divided by 16 is 0.25. Um, so you can see I have those backwards as well. No, that is correct. Anyway, let's do one where it'll have to round. So 4 divided by 3, 
So it's cutting off after two decimal places. And that's being done in the filter, not in the middleware, because we're using the same division middleware um, that we were using before. So let's go to an endpoint. The, the wraparound kind of middleware, all you have to do is do what we did before. You just do your before stuff before you call at app.call, and you do your after stuff after at app.call. So the endpoint here is it's checking to see if we have um, a decimal whole number for the divisor and the dividend, and if either of these have illegal characters, and I left the period out, so it, it's actually going to be uh, integer, no, integer values. If it doesn't match, then you're going to get a 500 error. And you'll notice that this has a content type and body as well, and since we're passing in a body, it will actually uh, render the body. So, we'll just come back here. And so if we try to divide Munchie by Gumbo, it says that your parameters are not valid. But if we change these, to three and four, then it executes properly. Now we haven't added the other middleware in there, so we're getting 1.3333. But uh, you kind of get the idea there. So this is, this is basically the, the framework that we're going to use to build some routing for um, our middleware, since that seems to be what people are most interested in, is how do I get that path and give back this content? So there are a couple of ways that I've seen to do it. And basically what I did is I just looked at things like Rails and Sinatra, and I decided, okay, well, um, if, if I want to do what they do, then how do I do it? So map to a class, that was something that I kind of came up with that looks a little bit like Rails. Um, using params and another piece of middleware is something that I came up with that also looks like Rails. And then the middleware and blocks is something that I came up with that looks a lot more like Sinatra. So we'll just run through these really quickly. Um, so you can map to a class, and so basically what I did is I created a router um, class, and you can see here that it just generates a map for get, post, put, and delete. Um, all you really need to map to a class in this instance is the HTTP um, method, and you need the, um, the path. So what we do is we've gone ahead and we've said, okay, well, um, if you call get, in fact, we just did map and with a block, and then it just evaluates the block against a new instance of router. And so within the block, if you did like get, path, comma, um, you know, another string that's formatted the way we want, or any object for that matter, uh, this router's pretty uh, permissive, then it'll just, it'll just come down here, and it actu I'm actually using method missing, and so it says if the map has a key key, which would be like get. Um, so if you call get and you have two arguments, so you know your second argument is where your route should go, um, then uh, you just stuff it into the map. My laser pointer is dying, but that's okay. So then anyway, when you do dot get route, then it goes in and it just references the hash. And I know there are better ways to do this, but this is quick and dirty and kind of illustrates the point, and then you can put in whatever data structure you want. Um, so here's the, here's the setup for the middleware. So we, we go in and we do my app, and then we, we have um, app and router and initialize, and what that does right here is this part generates our routes. Now what Rails does, oh thanks. Oh, it's green, all right. Isn't that the way it works in Star Wars? You know? <laughs> I, I, yeah, that's right. I, I can't, I can't, I'm a Jedi now, all right. So anyway, um, so you can see the get method, and that goes into our method missing and comes back with that uh, symbol. And then here's the path, and here's what we're going to do with the handler. So then what we, have to, what we have over here is our class handler. And it has def1, def2, def4. I'm actually only using def1 because we only set up a route for that. But then what we do is we come down here and uh, we do router, get route, um, and then we just pass in the environment and that, that strips out the, 
uh, the HTTP request method and the, um, uh, the path. And then it hands back this handler.1, we split that, and then we say, okay, well, um, handler, and again, I'm using eval. It wasn't my favorite way to go, but um, I ran out of time, and so I just crammed it in. But anyway, so this route zero is handler, because we split on the period, so handler.new generates a new object here. And then um, we come down here, and if we have the handler, and if we have a public method called whatever the second part was, which is one, then it just uh, it sends a, me a message back to handler and says, hey, evaluate this, convert it to a string, whatever it is, and then we're going to stick it in the body, and then we just pass it along to the chain. And so what we have here is basically an app that if we go to slash one, we should get back one. And so if we come over here, I've already run it. But you know we can we can refresh. It'll come back with the same thing. And uh, anyway, there you go. the The bottom level uh, in this case actually returns a 404 error, and I just copied the 404.html out of Rails. Oh nope, I didn't handle that case. My bad. Anyway, so you kind of get the idea there on how this would work. So if we come back to the, the, the next method, and, and again, these are all in their own branches, and you can find them here at the bottom, and I'll have to post these slides when I get back to my seat. Um, but anyway, so then we have uh, the params. We're going to use the same router that we used before. Um, the difference is, is that for this router, what we're going to pass in is we're going to pass in hashes that define some parameters that we want to actually add to the, to the query string. And you can see that that's what we're doing here. So you come down here, you get the route, and again, that gives you back this hash, handler and method. And then um, if you come down here, you can see that we're just tacking it onto the query string because the router request.new hasn't been called. And so if you try and append it to the, the rack request params, it'll actually tell you that you can't add something like that to a nil object. So we just tack this into the, the params and then we call into our stack. And uh, you can see here that we're using, I, this is something I neglected to point out, but right over here you have use my app, use Rubius, use Pythonistas. So basically what this does is this sets the route and then we include um, some more middleware, this um, Ruby, Rubius and Pythonistas to, uh, and we just include those in the stack. So what happens is if we, yeah, that's right. So what happens is we hit this and it pulls the route, it puts these into the query string so that when we come into um, this handler here, then what happens is this is some classed out of this. So it just finds the handler and if the handler masses, matches the class name, which in this case would be Rubyists, then it just evaluates the, the method call. And uh, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. And so um, what I've done here is I've actually built in a render, and render just returns the, the classic uh, rack response. So if it's Rubyist, then it renders awesome. And if it's Python, Python then it renders slimy. So, so we can go ahead and Come over here. So Ruby gives us awesome and Python is loading. That is interesting. All right, well, I don't have to time to debug it, so we'll just move on. No, I'm running them on different ports so that I can show the different. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I can show the different versions. Um, let's see. Oh, <laughs> no, it's this path right here. It's Python. And my middleware just may not have. Um, 
loaded that. I, I'm not sure I'll have to debug it, but anyway, you can see that it worked for Ruby and you can, you can set up as many routes as you want that way to handle that. I had it working last night, so anyway, sorry my voice is cracking. I'm, I, I think it's a, a mix between being excited to be here and not having any water in front of me. So anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the middleware blocks. Now this was actually kind of fun to write because this involved quite a bit of, uh, um, of metaprogramming. So let's go ahead and look at this real quick. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna set something up that defines a piece of middleware. And uh, this, this actually was too long to put in one place. So this is actually the rest of the method. And you can see here at the end that we're actually including this piece of middleware into our stack. So if we come here, we set up a class, it doesn't need a name, um, and then we, do, we just define these methods, action, initialize, and the block here is what's passed in. So if you think of, um, thanks. So if you think about the way Sinatra does things, so it does get, and then it passes a string for the path, and then it passes a block, do, do stuff, end. So what you have here is you have the verb, which is get, you have path, which is like slash whatever, and in the example it's slash chuck because I, I wanted to have the last word, and then the block, which is that do and all that stuff. So um, we set up this action which just takes that block. So if we call this class dot new, we set up a new instance, and then we call dot action, it would execute that block. Um, initialize, that's just our standard assign the app to add app. Um, we need to be able to access the verb and the path, so I just set up getters and setters. And I know there are better ways to do that, but I w again, I was being a little bit lazy. And then, you know, you have the middleware send, and so this sets up our call method. And so what we're checking here is we're saying, okay, well, if the request method matches the verb and the path info matches the path, then call action, otherwise, you know, pass, pass it along so somebody else can pick it up. And uh, then we set the verb, set the path, and then we put it into our stack. And so what this looks like is we require the, the API that we've just set up there for our uh, rack application. And so then all, all we do is we do get, which, you know, we set, set it up so that it, um, I set up methods so that it get called the define middleware and just passed get as the first parameter. So get slash chuck do, and then it sends back the success as text HTML with uh, a, 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 an appropriate method or an appropriate body. And then here, this is the, this is the default backend and you can see that it just re re returns a 404 with whatever's in this 404.html. And so if we come over here to our last piece of middleware, you can see that it's returned what we expect. And if you go somewhere else, well, sorry, Joe, you're undefined. So you're not found. All right. So anyway, um, I have like two, a minute or two left, so I'm just going to point out, I don't have time to go into views and layouts. Um, you can use a standard ERB or Haml, and uh, those libraries have the methods for uh, putting the, the information into them. But then if you set up render, then you can actually, you know, build the string out of uh, ERB or builder or whatever, stuff it into body, you just send that back and that would work. You could set up downstream middleware. Um, you may have to serialize the uh, uh, assignment variables that you're trying to pass into your view um, so that it can handle them properly. Or, you know, there may be a way to put them into the header and then pull them back out in a subsequent middleware. I didn't have time to play with it. Um, but you can use any form of markup as long as it, you know, gives you a string back. So that's pretty much all I have. Um, I did stuff it into 30 minutes. I'm impressed. Anyway, um, if you have any questions, um, I'll take them now. And then, you know, go check it out. Go 
get the source code. Yeah. I'm always curious, where do you draw the line between writing uh, just a piece of middleware and then bumping it up to using something like Sinatra? What do you mean? So um, writing your well, own? It seems like you could, yeah, like writing your own middleware piece or just using something that, like a framework like Sinatra. Mm -hmm. Well, Sinatra does a lot of things, but the core that most people use it for, I mean, it's not too much different from what I just did. Um, you know, so, I mean, if you, if you need the functionality that's in Sinatra, I mean, some of the niceties, like, that I didn't handle, like, if you want to give it a path that has, like, colon ID or something in it, you know, and you don't want to deal with, you know, building that in yourself, then you can handle it that way. Um, you know, you could also use regular expressions to handle some of that. You know, it really depends on the level of work you want to get into. If you're just defining a simple API, and you can just set, you can literally just uh, switch through a couple of cases, then rack might be the simpler way to go because all it's going to do is load the one library and then spit back, you know, text back at you. Another good dividing line is if the rack you need to forward to another app. Sinatra's better at an endpoint than something in between. But if you wanted to, say, like throttle somebody's request by API, that's a fantastic application for rack. Right, so um, I don't know if the recording picked up what Dave said. Basically what he said was um, Sinatra makes a really good endpoint, but uh, not necessarily a great uh, middleware. So, you know, you can use Sinatra to define your underlying stuff, but if you need something that will delegate under certain circumstances, then you probably want to use Rack. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if if the Sinatra app, which is sitting on top of some Rails app or something else, responds to those actions, uh, like slash login or something uh, something else, uh, you know, it, it, the process ends there. Otherwise, it just falls through. So, mm -hmm. uh, we've had a lot of success actually using Sinatra as a middleware. Yeah, I, I'd be really interesting interested to see how that works. Sinatra, like a lot of the other ones, are based on Rack. So you would assume that it would have that capability. Um, yeah, any, any rack app can be used in the middle of Yep. Yeah, I think, I think Rails, in theory, should be able to, but I don't know how you would do that. Any other questions? I, I did have a question for you. Um, I've looked at this somewhat in Rack, but never really very seriously. And one thing that always bothered me about it, uh, if you're using an evented uh, web server like, like Finn or something, my impression is that you could never really do streaming responses or, you know, web sockets through Rack or something, mm -hmm. um, if you even want to, uh, because the entire response goes back as one chunk, not a, not a streaming like I/O object. Or something. Mm -hmm. is, is it possible to do streaming responses in Rack? That you can see? I've always felt like the honest answer is the best one. I don't know. Yeah, and for for those that didn't hear it, it was it was a question about streaming media and things like that through Rack. Anything else? Anyone else? All right. Well, thank thanks thanks very much.